Let's go through a number of examples using these formulas now. What we see here is, it says find the volume of a right trapezoidal prism that has a height of 15 centimeters. The two bases of the trapezoid measure 4 centimeters and 8 centimeters, and its height is 5 centimeters. So since this is a prism, remember our prism volume formula, where prism will volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. Now, what we have to do in a number of these problems, though, is to think about what the area of the base is going to be. That's the harder thing. In this case, the base that we have down here is a trapezoid. So our first part of our problem here is we have to figure out the area of the trapezoid. So the trapezoid base. And recall that the area formula for a trapezoid is area is equal to base 1 plus base 2 of the trapezoid times the height of the trapezoid divided by 2. And so going through our steps, let's start filling in what we know here. We're given all these pieces of information. In the problem, we have that bases of the trapezoid are 4 and 8. So you've got 4 plus 8. And the height of the trapezoid is right here. So that's the perpendicular distance between those two bases. And we are told that that is 5 centimeters divided by 2. And so now we can go through and just crunch those numbers. 4 times 8, or 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 times 5 is 60. So you have 60 divided by 2. And that means that our final area for the base is 30 square centimeters. Now that is an area of the base. We now have to use that to get our volume. So now let's think about our volume formula. Again, volume is area of the base times the height. And now that we have the area of the base is 30, we'll plug that in. And the height of our prism is the 15 over here, 15 centimeters. So 30 times 15 will be our volume. So we can sort of put steps 3 and 4 together. We can go right to our answer at this point. And 30 times 15 is 450. And remember, this is a volume, so we're talking about cube centimeters. So that would be our final answer for the first problem. Problem number two says find the height of an oblique cylinder that has a base with a radius of 6 inches and a volume of 252 pi cubic inches. All right, so a couple things on this one. First off, the word oblique, remember, means that it's tilted off to the side. So oblique is slanted off to the side, which means that we have to be a little bit careful when calculating the height. In this case, we're actually going to be calculating height because we're given the volume. And then that's the other part is we're actually given the volume of this one is 252 pi cubic inches. All right. So we remember that our formula for volume of any prism or cylinder is area of the base times the height. Now, we don't know what the height is, and nor do we know what the area of the base is, but let's think about area of the base on this one. So the area of the base is pi r squared, because it is a circle. So pi r squared times the height. And actually, since I'm not even plugging in the numbers yet, this really still goes with step number one. Now let's plug in our numbers for step number two here. So the area of the base times the height. I know that my radius is 6, so pi 6 squared times the height. And once again, we are told what the volume is, so I'm actually going to put 252 pi in this spot right here. So 252 pi is equal to pi r squared, pi 6 squared, times the height. All right, let's work that out a little bit, simplify it. So we've got 252 pi is our volume, equal to pi 6 squared, so that would be 36 pi times the height. All right, now let's do a little bit of algebra and start to get h by itself here. First thing I think I'm going to do is undo the multiplying of pi by dividing both sides by pi. So the pi cancels out. And then the other thing that we're going to do is divide both sides by 36 to undo that multiplication. So that cancels out the 36 over here. And now we have 252 divided by 36. 
which gets us right to our answer. So 252 divided by 36 is 7. So 7 is equal to the height. And the unit on that, now it is a height, so be careful. That means that we are just using, okay, I just about put centimeters there, but in this problem we are looking at inches. So 7 inches would be our height. Well, that's how we might work through a problem like that with a little bit of algebra. All right, getting into something just a little bit more complicated here. It says, find the volume of a regular hexagonal pyramid with a height of 8 centimeters. Each side of its base is 6 centimeters. All right. So once again, we have our formula. I'm just going to maybe think about our formula right over on the side here. That the formula for a pyramid is the area of the base times height divided by 3. All right, we have the height is 8 centimeters of the pyramid, but we do not have the area of the base. So that's actually the first thing that we're going to do is get the area of a hexagon, a regular hexagon, I should say. So we'll say regular hexagon. And remember, the area of a regular hexagon is apothem times side length times number of sides divided by 2. Recall that formula right here. Now, I've got the side length of 6, and I've got the number of sides, because it's a hexagon that's 6. But notice what I do not have is the apothem shown in here. So I have to use even a little bit more creativity and figure out what this apothem is. Remember that apothem goes from the center perpendicular to the side. So here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to think about making a little triangle. So we have that little triangle right there that's on the base, and I'm going to just extract that triangle out here and do a little bit more work. So I've got this triangle right here that I've outlined. And this triangle right here, so it's this triangle that I'm outlining. Now, notice that length right there is half of the length of the base here. So I've got 6 centimeters for the whole length. That means that on my triangle, this is actually 3 centimeters. And this is where the apothem is right here. Now, what I can do is use... One of my rules, because I'm being clever here, I'm thinking, okay, if this is a regular hexagon, I know that all of my angles in a regular hexagon are 120 degrees from my work earlier this year from 180 times n minus 2 or 6 minus 2, because there's six sides, which is uh, 720 divided by 6 is equal to 120 degrees. So I know each of my angles in the regular hexagon is 120 degrees. Now, this triangle right here splits that 120-degree angle into a 60-degree angle and another 60-degree angle on this side. But in my triangle, that means that's 60. Well, that's nice because that makes this a 30-60-90 triangle. And if that's 30-60-90 and my short length right here is 3, then I know the longer leg is 3 times square root 3. That's the rule, short leg times square root 3. And if I wanted to know what this length was, I know it's 2 times my short leg, 2x, which would be 6. Okay, so this is actually my apothem right here. So I had to do a bit of work on this problem, use a lot of the knowledge from earlier this year to tie it all together here. But I actually could figure out now what my apothem was. So now I have area is equal to apothem times side length times number of sides. So 3 square root 3 is the apothem. My side length is given over here as 6. The number of sides is also 6, because it's a hexagon, divided by 2. Now let's simplify this. 3 times 6 times 6. All right, 3 times 6 times 6 is 108. So I've got 108 square root 3 divided by 2. So I just multiply those coefficients, and then I still have the square root 3 there. And then... 108 divided by 2 is 64. So 64 square root 3 is my area, square centimeters, of the base. Whew, that was a lot of work there. In some of these problems, that's where the majority of the work is going to be, trying to figure out the area of the base. All right, hopefully this is a little easier on this side now. My volume is area of the base times the height divided by 3. Now, the area of the base I just determined was 64 square root 3. And I know 
that my height, ooh, I just made a mistake over here, didn't I? I just realized this. Some of you guys already noticed. 108 divided by 2 is not 64. That would be 54. All right, so 54 square at 3. My bad. Sorry about that. Every once in a while in these videos, there's going to be a little mistake, and sometimes I can catch them. Sometimes I have to go back and edit later, but I'm glad I caught that one because I know some of you guys did. All right, so the height of our pyramid over here was 8, so area of the base times 8 divided by 3. All right, 54 times 8 would be 432, so 432 square root 3 divided by 3. And 432 divided by 3 is 144 square root 3. And if we're leaving our answer in an exact form, that would be at 144 square root 3 cube centimeters. And if you multiply that out, that's approximately 249 cube centimeters. So there is our answer on number three. All right, number four. I think this one's a little bit less complicated than number three. Once again, we have a cone, which is similar to a pyramid in its overall formula. A cone has a base radius of three inches and its volume is 24 pi cubic inches. Find the height. All right, so volume is equal to the area of the base times the height divided by three. That goes for all pyramids and cones. So let's plug in what we know here. Um, we might think about actually, before I even do that, that in this problem, that would mean the area of the base is a circle. So pi r squared times the height divided by 3. If I simplify that a little bit. All right, let's plug in what we know here. So the area of the base is pi r squared. So pi 3 squared radius of this problem was 3, times the height, that's what we don't know, divided by 3. And in this case, I actually know my volume is 24 pi up here, so 24 pi. So let's actually put that number in to the volume spot. So got 24 pi in here. If I stay with red there. All right. We'll be fine. All right, let's do our work. Maybe over here, I'll the switch colors. Why not? Let's simplify a little bit. So we've got now 24 pi is equal to pi r squared. So pi 3 squared would be 9 pi times the height divided by 3. All right. Now let's see here. Actually, you know what? You could do the algebraic steps in a couple different ways here. Let me think of you know, what we can kind of do in, in class. Um, maybe what I will do is we'll multiply both sides by 3 first. That's kind of how we've been doing it. You could actually take the 9 divided by 3 here and get 3. But let's do this. We're going to multiply both sides by 3 to cancel out the bottom of the fraction. So that would give us 72 pi. is equal to 9 times pi times h. And now let's get rid of that pi by dividing it out of both sides. So it cancels out here. And let's get rid of the 9 by dividing it out of both sides. So 72 divided by 9 is 8. And so 8 inches is our height.